Thank you for listening to Discovering the Scriptures with Dr. Peter John Parises. Currently, we are in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. We are in the prophecies of Daniel concerning the end times, as we saw with the preceding verse. Let me read first Daniel seven thirteen in the King James Version. Quote, I saw in the night visions. And behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Unquote. Let's read this in context before we go any further. The paragraph assigned to it is Daniel chapter 7, verse 11 through verse 14. Reading from the King James Bible, quote, I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words, which the horns spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed, and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. Now let's go ahead and look at this verse in the Young's Literal Translation. Quote, I was seen in the visions of the night, and lo, with the clouds of the heavens, as a son of man was one coming, and unto the ancient of days he hath come. And before him, they have brought him near. Unquote. Now, it is very proper for us to take a look at the scripture and see if there is anything that Daniel is writing in the Chaldean language that he has written someplace else to give us better understanding. So we're going to take a look at the Ancient of Days. Where has he used this? Well, he's using the same chapter. Chapter 7, verse 9, he wrote, quote, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fierce flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Again, he used it in Daniel 7, 22. Quote, Until the Ancient of Days came, and the judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Unquote. Okay, I want to continue looking at this verse. I looked at all the other passages and words that are used here to see if there's anything significant that we can draw from Daniel's writings in the Chaldean language or any other writings in the Chaldean language in the Old Testament. And there are none, except what I just went through with the Ancient of Days. But I want to read you this verse in the Geneva Bible, 1599. That's the date. Quote, As I beheld in visions by night, behold, one like the Son of Man came in the clouds of heaven and approached unto the Ancient of Days and they brought him before him. Unquote. I think it's important that we take a look at this passage and see what's going on here. We need to take a look at the Interlinear Bible before we start drawing any kind of thoughts, ideas, conclusions. First, so let's go to that and take a look to see 
What can we draw out of the original language? Okay, I want you to remember that when we're looking at this chronologically in his writings. He is writing backwards. He's gone back. He's not writing where he was when he left off before this um, stance of the visions that he's seeing. But he went back to another time frame when he was younger. And he's letting us know what happened. He's also writing passively. That's why this is a quell. He's writing passive. Why is that? Has he had time to think about it before he wrote it? Don't know. But this is the you know, raw translation. One like a son. That is a noun, masculine, singular. Of heaven. Again, a noun. Clouds, masculine, plural. With and behold. That is a conjunctive, an injection. Night, the masculine singular determinant. In visions, masculine plural. I, now this is written passively. It's a verb, it's perfect. First person, comma, singular. But it's quell, so he's writing it passively. I, but passively, was watching. Participle, masculine singular. I was passively watching. They brought him near. This is a hyphio. And this is a perfect third person masculine plural. Third person masculine singular. And what does all this mean? This is, he's bringing about a causative action. They, that's the plural, brought him near. That's the singular. So you have him writing passively, but you're seeing a causative action going on while he's passively watching what's happening. And before him, this is a proposition third person masculine singular. Him, it's masculine. He came, third person masculine singular. It's quite again, it's perfect. It's also casual. Of days the masculine plural determinant. Ancient, masculine, singular, construct. And two, coming, that is a quell, perfect third person, masculine, singular, came, quell again, so passive, masculine, singular, of man, masculine, singular. So what do we have here? We have two male figures. Predominantly speaking, is what we have going on here in the interlineal. Now, who are these? In this particular verse, we have what seems to be an audience being brought forth with grandeur and specular as far as it's magnificent. We see a night vision. He is has his eyes open. Daniel is seeing this with his eyes open. He's not dreaming. It's a night vision. And behold, he sees one like the Son of Man. Came with the clouds of heaven. And it came to the Ancient of Days. And they brought him near before him. You have what appears to be the Son of God, Jesus. Coming with the clouds of heaven. And he's coming to the Ancient of Days, which is God. God, Jehovah, and they brought him near. Angels, of course. This is a grand entrance of Jesus before God. Now, why all this big to do about this? Why the use of ancient of days? Well, Daniel does not know who Jesus is, as per se, in this vision. He is not able to look at the Bible and look back and take a look at what's happening, what he saw compared to what others have seen in the Old Testament and the, and the visions and the prophecies and what's going on in the New Testament. He didn't have any of this. The answer to days, only Daniel in the Chaldean language uses this three times in this same chapter. Why? I think it's being used to show the significance of this prophecy, this vision that's being relayed to him. That this is not some kingdom 
that's here today, gone tomorrow. It's one showing that this is a ruler who has been around forever. Showing contrast between temporary and permanent. Between who the Son of Man is coming to with a grand specular of all these angels being brought before God the Father. Can you imagine what God must have felt knowing that Jesus wanted to come see him with what he's doing and wanted an audience to talk with God about whatever it is they wanted to discuss but yet wanted to be with him during this discussion. And so this grand presence was put together to bring Jesus to God for this purpose. I think it's one of the first times I've even realized just how great God must have felt knowing that Jesus is coming to speak with him. He's on his way to see him. Not just casually pop up here and talk to him, but there's a grand procession that's going on. He must have felt great, must have felt loved, must have felt just overwhelmingly wonderful that here it is, his son, coming to talk with him. What did you feel like when you found out that your boyfriend or your girlfriend, whichever, wanted to speak with you in person? You didn't know why, but you were excited. How great did you make you feel? So I'm not going to step ahead to the next verse on this particular one. We're going to focus on what's going on right here. Because when we get to the next verse, you will see what the Father does. But here we're looking at what's going on. So let's take a look at the ancient commentaries on this. John Gill in the 1700s gives us the commentaries using the ancient commentaries up to a thousand years ago. So let's read those. I saw in the night visions, very probably the same night in which he had the dream and vision of the four beasts. But this that follows, being a new object presented, is introduced and prefixed after this manner, as well as being something wonderful and worthy of attention, has a behold prefix to it. And behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Here it is. This is the Christ, the Messiah, as most Christians interpreters, and even the Jews themselves, both ancient and modern, allow. In the ancient book of Zophar, that's Z-O-H-A-R, it is said, quote, In the times of the Messiah, Israel shall be one people to the Lord, and he shall make them one nation in the earth, and they shall rule above and below. As it is written, quote, Behold, one like the Son of Man came from the clouds of heaven, unquote. This is the King Messiah, of whom it is written, quote, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, unquote, etc. Daniel 2, verse 44. So, in the Talmud, this prophecy is thus reconciled with another, coming the Messiah. And Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. And I'm going to take a moment and read it to you. Reading from the King James Bible, quote, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly, and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the full of an ass. Unquote. Continuing on, to what R. Alexander said, R. Joshua ben Levin, objects, what is written, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and it is written, poor and writing upon an ass, which is thus adjusted. If they, the Israelites, are worthy, he, the Messiah, comes with the clouds of heaven. 
but if they are not worthy, he comes poor and riding on an ass. And so it is interpreted in their ancient <coughs> midrashes or expositions, as well us and more modern ones. Jarkin on the text says he is the Messiah. And so R. Sedesh uh, Gaon, that's G A O N, and Jarkias, this is Messiah our righteousness. And Al Ben Ezra observes that this is the sense R. Jeos, as J E S H U A gives, quote, that one like to the Son of Man, unquote, is the Messiah. And he adds, it is right only along with him must be joined the holy people, who are the Israelites and the Jews. Anani, which signifies clouds, is the name of the Messiah, founded upon his text in the Targum. Of First Chronicles, chapter three, verse twenty-four, and I'll take a moment and read this. I was reading this passage, and it has to do with the descendants and the chronological order. And I was like, "What does this mean?" And when I looked at the twenty-fourth verse, the listing of the sons, and one of the sons listed is A N A N I. He was number seven. Which the interpretations of Jarki is this, that this is the King Messiah who is to be revealed. So that this son not only represents a son of being, but a son that is going to be in this verse that has been chronological. I don't thoroughly understand that one yet, but we'll have to look into it when we get to that verse. Let's go forward with this. Quote, where mention is made of the name of a person, A-N-A-N-I, it is added, who is the Messiah that is to be revealed. Okay. So, in an ancient book called, it's spelled T-A-N-C-H-U-M-A, speaking of Zerubbabel, it is asked, from whence did he spring? It is answered from David, as it is said, First Chronicles 3.10 And Solomon's son was Rehoboam. And so all in the line are mentioned unto Anani. Daniel 7.24 And then it is asked, Who is this Anani? This is the Messiah, as it is said in Daniel 7.13 And I saw in the visions of the night, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. He is said to be as or like the Son of Man. In agreement with the style of this, these visions, Daniel 7, 4, or because as yet he was not really incarnate, only appeared in a human form, or this as it is not a note of solemnitude, but of truth and reality, as in John Chapter 1, verse 14. And I'll take a moment and read that. King James Version, quote, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, unquote. Continuing on, Or because He was more than a man, and His coming with the clouds of heaven denotes the majesty, visibility, and swiftness with which he came to take open possession of his kingdom and glory. So that interprets this of the angels of heaven with which he will be attended and came to the ancient of days, his divine father, from whom, as man and mediator, he receives his kingdom is invested with it and insisted in it. See Revelations chapter 5 verse 7. And I'll take a moment and read this. Reading from the King James Bible, quote, And it came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Unquote. Continuing on. This is not to be understood of his first coming in the flesh, which was from his father, 
and that to him, nor of his ascension to heaven, exaltation and session at the right hand of God, when he intended receiving the kingdom from the Father, and was made and declared, Lord and Christ. But this seems to respect what shall be unto the destruction of the fourth beast, when Christ shall receive and take to himself his great power, and reign, and more visibly appear, by his Father's designation and appointment, and his open glory to be King and Lord over all. And they brought him near before him, not Elijah the prophet, as Jacinus, rather the angels, as others, or the saints by their prayers, who hastened to, and hastened thereby, the coming and kingdom of Christ in a more spiritual and glorious manner, or it may be rendered in personably. He was brought near before him, as by the Septuagint, Syriac, and Arabic versions. Unquote. That ends John Gill's commentary about this verse. What you can see is we are leading up very quickly to some very powerful prophetic of what's going to happen. We have a procession that's being brought forth to God, whether it's by God's instructions, whether it's by Jesus' love, whether it's by mutual respect, we don't know. Something's happening here. And when there's a grand procession, usually something is about to happen. And do we know? We have an insight, because we've seen as we read this verse in context, what is about to happen in the next verse. But here, we're going to go along verse by verse. And you'll see as you get into this next verse, what is about to happen. Will it happen to your lifetime? Will it happen after your lifetime? Has it happened and the events following going to happen? I'm going to present all these to you. And you make up your own mind of what you think. Because that's what we're here for. But I'm going to tell you right now. I wouldn't want to be in the end times. Whether it be today, tomorrow, next year, next century. I would not want to be in the end times and not know my Bible verse by verse by verse having at least read it several times get an idea of what's in there that's why these discovering the scriptures is so important we're gonna go through every verse of the Bible God willing and we're gonna go through every verse so that when these things transpire you will know and you will know what to do because remember, everyone had Jesus' birth wrong. Will you have everything perfectly right when Jesus comes? Maybe not. But you'll know what to do. Because you'll have listened, you'll have studied, you will have meditated, you will have spoken with God, you will pray, you will be guided by the Holy Spirit, your teacher. You'll be in tune. Tune the out, go about your life. No, you won't be. You'll, you'll mess it up like everybody else did. And how bad will you mess it up? Will you mess it up so bad that you're one of the ones that reject Jesus when he comes back? You won't be able to see him for who he is. You won't know. Or are you so self-righteous that you'll think, oh no, I'll know, I'll know. They didn't back then. And I can tell you, some of those are in the temple waiting for his arrival considerably a lot more time put into it than what your walk is with God now. So think about it. Will you be blinded or will you know? Show God how much you want to know. Study his word. Meditate upon it. Be humble and present it before him. In prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to teach you. Ask the Father. Now stay tuned. We're going to go further and further into his prophecies. We're hitting revelations. We're hitting the prophecies that Jesus gives us. Daniel is the beginning. We're going through this. And as you can see, we're about to hit some powerful stuff. Go ahead and go down below. Hit the like button if you like this. Hit the subscribe button if you want to hear more. Hit the little bell if you want to be notified about this. And let's walk through it. Be prepared. Remember Ephesians 6. 
have your battle gear on in the day of battle so that you don't do all this work and you yourself lose it all. Be ready. Make sure you don't mess up. God bless you. Please continue to pray for this ministry and tell others and hit all the ads, please, so that it can be uh, avenue, revenues from, from advertisement can help so I can put more time into this. God bless you and thank you.